Thank you for joining us for our Campus Safety and Sexual Assault Awareness Google Hangout. Thanks to provide parents with the opportunities to ask questions, get their concerns addressed, and become better educated with the school and federal government's policies and laws. Tonight, our topics are going to be federal laws and how the universities must abide by them, what laws have recently changed, reporting and how reporting is handled, and what Finley is currently doing to uh, doing currently or considering doing to promote a safe atmosphere. Our panelists tonight are Dave, Matt, and a chance to introduce themselves here in just a moment. But I do want to remind you that you can send your questions in using the chat feature that is below the video, or you can tweet your questions to at using the hashtag AskUF. All right, panelists, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Dave Elmswall, Vice President for Student Affairs. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Matt Bruscotter, Assistant Dean for Environmental Safety, Security, and Emergency Management. And I am Rachel Walter. I All right, thank you guys. <clears throat> let's get right into our topic, and that is federal laws. Uh, let's start by talking about these federal laws and the ones that are in place and how the university must abide by them. Sure, there's been um, to the topic of sexual assault, uh, stalking, dating violence, domestic violence, and so there was uh, what was called the Violence Against Women Act, and it, there were amendments to what was called the Clary Act. And we have been for a number of years now, and that is the, that, those are the guidelines that help institutions decide what they need to report, how they need to report things, so that parents and students can control activity on a campus and surrounding a campus. The new regulations that were added in, though, added a whole other series of requirements about reporting, educating, victim advocacy, victim resources. And so those are currently in place, and we are sort of in a, a before they become final law and fully enforced, which will be next, I believe, March? June. June, and they'll be go, go fully enforced. Uh, we can talk more as we go through this a little bit, but we have made quite a few efforts to try and really cover all aspects of compliance with the law. We redid all of our policies last summer, and as a result of that, we have some very detailed guidelines in place to make sure that we're doing exactly what's expected uh, all the federal requirements, but also making sure we're looking out for the students on campus. Okay, let's talk about um, how federal law has changed and what policies maybe have recently changed. Well, as Dave mentioned, um, <clears throat> the Cleary Act was amended by the VAWA uh, reauthorization, and it added a new section that dealt specifically with sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking. Um, this required a number of things that Dave mentioned, but a larger piece that it also required was how universities and colleges have to respond and investigate these types of incidents when they occur on their campuses. Um, they've made a separation between what colleges do and what um, police departments and prosecutors do, so that colleges really have to when they get a report, they have to take action and they have to provide a fair, prompt, and impartial process to make sure that um, these incidents are fully investigated and uh, a just outcome is arrived at. So reporting-wise, how does a university handle the reporting? Well, we've done a lot to reduce barriers to reporting on our campus by um, allowing students to report to a variety of different offices, student affairs, security, my office, um, counseling services, uh, health services, our um, pastoral ministry on campus. And really, they can go to any person that they view as an authority on campus and talk to them and have this incident reported. Additionally, we have an online tool called our Silent Witness a report form that uh, anybody can go to and can report completely anonymously uh, that something has occurred. So we've done a lot to reduce barriers uh, on our campus to allow students to report, to feel comfortable reporting, to feel safe reporting. All right, and as another quick reminder, you can ask all of your questions in the chat box that is right below the video. 
Remember, you can tweet us your questions at, at using at you Finley, using that hashtag ask. What are some things that, that Finley is currently doing or can promote a safe atmosphere? Well, we, we uh, actually received a grant coming into this year, and it was a significant grant from the Department of Justice uh, from the Office of Violence Against Women. And that grant is going to allow us to add a variety of resources. Talked about reducing barriers, making sure that victims have access to multiple resources, both on campus in the community as well as legal services. So there's quite a bit we're going to be able to do the effort over the course of the next year to do education with males and females because this is a topic that needs to be discussed with all students. It's an important topic. It's one that I know in the news on a regular basis has become clearly in focus, especially on college campuses everywhere. So we have an obligation to make sure we're talking. And I'm a parent. I know your parents. And I know that these are important things to discuss with your children and to talk about how this law impacts all college students and how they need to think about the decisions they make and how they want to proceed as they go. This is a, an important topic and hopefully because we've got this grant, we are going to be able to provide some education that will help them be well equipped to make it through college and make the good decisions they need to make and hopefully walk through the arch and graduate. The first part of our grant was used to uh as Dave mentioned, reduce those barriers, improve services to victims, get our policies in line and developed. Um, the next phase of our grant of that, and in February we'll be conducting basically a, a blitz on the topic where we'll be having a lot of different programming and educational opportunities for students, projects they can participate in, culminating in a, an event at the end of the uh, month that uh, will be mandatory credit to a lot of it from a lot of the different colleges on campus to our other students um, to who attend that will talk specifically about sexual assault, what it means from an academic standpoint, what it means from a criminal justice standpoint, use these questions and inform them about consent and how it works on a campus now with these new laws. Additionally, uh, the university outside of the grant in this semester provided an online training program to inform students and faculty and staff about uh, the different laws that have been changed, about the new policies the university had, been put, had put in place because of that, and the different things that students needed to know about bystander intervention and standing up for themselves and for other people, um, and how to avail themselves of the various services uh, available both on campus and off. Revolving around this topic, um, directly from a parent point of view, what can parents do to help? They can talk to their sons and daughters. It's, as I said earlier, uh, a topic, and you do need to talk about it. I think parents need to do whatever they can to learn about the law itself, to learn about what college campuses are doing, what high schools are doing, what grade schools are even doing to try to. But I think they need to have discussions with their children about the decisions they make once they come to college. and. Those are discussions we all have with our children, but I think they've become very important uh, especially around this specific topic. And I know Rachel interacts with lots of students, especially the ones living on campus, so I'd let, like to have her talk a little bit about this too. Yeah, I think one of the things that UF has worked really hard toward in this past year is to take the test to challenge students to talk about it, to not be afraid to have discussions around the topic of sexual assault and domestic violence. So I think that one of the best things that has come out of this grant is to remove the barriers to allow students to really have honest conversations around the topic. And this, this question may be a little bit more directed towards Matt, but I'm wondering if um, maybe we could all talk about it as well. But let's, uh, let's hit on some security factors that we have here on campus. Um, for example, the blue phone, the security escorts, touch on that a little bit. Sure. Um, we, ha we have a security department on campus. Uh, they are here 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 
uh, students can avail themselves of those individuals and the different services they provide anytime, day or night. Uh, they'll provide escorts to students to and from classes, to and from buildings, to and from their cars. Um, they'll provide rides to the students um, on campus as well. Um, and they are there as a resource for the students to report to, to provide a safe, um, a safe haven for them. Uh, additionally, the university has worked very hard uh, to put into place um, physical security measures such as our blue phones that are scattered throughout campus that students can use in an emergency. We also have uh, security cameras on our campus and right now we're going through a very large overhaul of the entire security camera system that will improve the quality and the number of cameras that we have on our campus. Uh, we work very hard to be as proactive as we can um, and we're very concerned about uh, the well-being and the safety of our students on campus. It's a very high priority for us. Another resource that students have is our Residence Life Program. Uh, the RAs, as we call them, go through extensive training in August and also another session in January and are trained on a lot of different topics. Um, in addition, each of, we have three staff offices on campus that are staffed each evening on the weekend, on weeknights from 8 to midnight and weekends from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, by those resident assistants. And so that resource is there. Um, in various buildings on campus, as well as on each floor or in each area that students live. We also have an excellent relationship with the Finley Police Department and Hancock County Sheriff. We work very closely with them. They share information with us regularly about things we need to be aware of. We also share information with them if we notice anything. And this gets back to what I believe is a, a, um, an important responsibility for everyone is if you see something, you need to say something, you need to report it. Because the sooner we know that, we can let our security people know, we can let Finley PD know, and we can make sure that we're looking out for problems before they occur. The other thing we also do is we have lots of educational programming that goes on about personal safety, including self-defense. So there are self-defense classes offered quite frequently, and uh, we have some different faculty staff who actually teach those, and they're actually very well attended. And uh, it's interesting to see how many students do go to those and want that kind of education. But we, we talk about personal safety quite a bit. All right. Well, as we uh, proceed on here, I, I think I'd like to throw out a last call for questions. And in doing so, um, we'd like to give you guys a chance to give your final thoughts, closing comments. Well, I think, um, you know, from my point of view, it, it's um, understand the type of situations they get into when you get alcohol involved and when you get in situations um, in college. We have to be very clear that the decisions we make say a lot about who we are as individuals and they have a lot to say about uh, the kind of campus climate we want. We have a lot of excellent, excellent people, young people on this campus right now um, and we really need them to stand up when they see something as Dave said and say something. Um, you know, when they see somebody speaking about somebody um, in an objective way or t knocking them down because they did stand up for somebody, we need them to stand up for those individuals. We need them to stand up when they see something that maybe is not wrong. Stand up for their friends when they're in a compromising situation. And I think that'll go a long ways towards helping us prevent these on our campus. I think it's really important for us to point out that at the University of Finley, our students are our number one priority. And every single student here at UF is important to us and we want to do everything we can to make sure that they're having a safe and positive experience while they're at UF. Our primary focus is to provide education to the students so that when they go through their year, gain valuable life lessons, life skills, and leave here as someone who's going to contribute in a meaningful way. So part of that education is about, as Matt and Rachel both talk about, making the right choices, um, paying attention to the situations you're in, looking out for your own safety, looking out for the safety of other people, standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves, stepping in when you see something happen that doesn't seem quite right. Those are all things we want to do. Those are all things I want my own children to try and do. And so your sons and daughters are very important to the university. The university wouldn't be here without the students who make the university happen. So it's whatever we can 
to try to serve them, to try to protect them, but we do want them to take the responsibility for looking out for each other, for letting us know about things that are going on, and to give us suggestions about how we can hopefully help them better with the security measures we take. Society is very complex. Going on in society, there are many things that go on on every college campus. Students have a lot of challenges these days. We want to make sure we provide them good resources and help them as we can, but we also want to really step up and take the responsibility of becoming the person they want to become. And hopefully, with, uh, with our help and your help as their parents, we can make that happen. We did have a question come in. Uh, thank you very much. Hayden would like to know what the school has done to inform students of these programs prior to the recent incident. There's quite a bit of information that goes out all the time. We have an email called UF Update, which the students will probably tell you they get far too much email from us. But we post things on Facebook, we send things out via Twitter, the resident assistants actually, the resident assistants actually uh, share information about programs that are going on on campus. The policies themselves are publicly available on the website, and we ask students to look at university policies, and in particular, a document called Student Rights and Responsibilities, which is available publicly, and we do ask students to look at that. But because they are adults, that is a responsibility they have to look at that. And additionally, at the beginning of the year, we launched a program for uh, students, faculty, and staff that I mentioned earlier it was an online training program uh, that we wanted students to go through so they could understand these changes in specific to this particular topic, what the policies were, and uh, what they needed to know moving forward. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, joining us, uh, that is all the questions that we have. There's, there's nothing further. So I would like to thank everyone who did join us. And if you do have questions,